very good. I'm feeling pretty good today. Hello and welcome to the second in our series to improve your squash. Last week we learned the basics of the grip and forehand and backhand straight drive. Before we begin today's lesson, which will be the forehand and backhand cross-court drive and the boast from the back of the court, let's remind ourselves of what we learned from last week's program. Firstly, the grip. Adopt the shake hands grip with a cocked wrist and don't hold the racket too tight. On the straight drive, get the feet facing the side wall, the racket back early, swing through to hit the ball just in front of the leading foot on the forehand and on the backhand side further in front of the leading foot. Swing the racket through to follow the direction of the ball, keeping a nice balance with the head still and the eye on the ball. Fundamentally, the technique of the cross-court drive is the same as the straight drive, which we covered last week. Except this time, the ball is taken earlier, or to put it another way, further forward of the front foot. The shoulders open more to allow the racket to follow the ball on the follow-through. When you're playing the cross-court drive, you face the side wall and hit the ball well in front of you. Notice here I'm playing the cross-court drive taking ball early in the front foot and keeping the distance from the side wall. Trying to get the ball back into the other side of the court. And notice my left arm is keeping away to give me a good balance. Right, I'm feeding Hiddy here on the forehand drive and let's just try and look at one or two useful points. As you can see, he's always perfectly balanced for every shot. The racket back early, and that bent leading knee giving them that lovely balance. Oh, that one, Hiddy, I see you actually hit when the ball was past your leading foot. Now, this is something perhaps we don't recommend to beginners, but how you do it, of course, is that you actually break your arm at the elbow a little bit earlier using a bit of wrist. That's right, John. Uh, Sometimes I do use wrist in, in, in the cross-court drive, and it helps me a lot to send my opponent the wrong way. He expects a straight drive, but it's always a cross-court. And that uh, wrist work helps me a lot in that. But first you've got to master to hit the simple cross-court, and when you master that, you could play wrist work and all different shots. Now let's move on to the backhand cross-court drive, which is almost identical to the forehand shot, except when you complete the action, the follow-through should be short. The reason it should be short, to save hitting your opponent with an excessive swing, it can be dangerous if you're not careful. The backhand cross-court drive is similar to the forehand cross-court drive. You face the side wall, your right foot forward, and bend your knees. And main aim is to hit the ball wider, away from the tee, force your opponent into the back of the court. So there, you got to aim to put your opponent into the other side of the court. feeding Hiddy, that he's getting into position early. He turns his shoulders so they're facing almost the back wall at the top of the back swing. He swings through to hit the ball well in front of his front foot. And the shoulders open up as he swings through. A lovely balance. This man hits the ball on the backhand as hard as anyone in the world. That's better. Try to bring the ball deep into the side wall. That's very good.
Hitty's feeding Zarek, his younger brother, on the forehand cross-court drive. Zarek really throws the racket head at the wall. In a classic action. Getting a little bit close to the wall sometime. As a result, he's snatching it a little bit. But he's getting a great deal of racket head speed going with his throwing action. Hitting that ball very hard. Tactically, of course, he should be trying to hit that ball wide of the tee and to a good length. It's a good action he's got going there. Nicely poised and with a good follow through. Here I'm practicing with my younger brother, Zarak, back end cross court drive. Zarak got a habit to rush into his stroke. He's getting to the ball very nicely, but when he's striking it, his swing is too quick for that shot. He's got to take it nice and easy and bend his knees, which he's got to learn in the future. Yes, Hiddy, he is rushing it a bit, but it's lovely to see this enthusiasm in these younger players. Better than that than not bothering to go after the ball at all, but because he is rushing it a bit, he seems to be getting a little bit close to the ball sometimes. It doesn't give himself a chance to really wind up and turn those shoulders as much as he could do. One of the best ways to practice forehand and backhand cross court drive to throw the ball in front of you and strike the ball. It's one of the best ways you can do that. Yes, you're right. I find when I'm teaching beginners especially, but even some people with fairly accomplished games of squash, but perhaps have got faults in their technique, that you've got to take them back to this very basic practice. Well, when you're playing that shot, you must remember, take it in front of the leading foot, and also the follow-through should not be there. That's wrong because you can hit your opponent. The follow-through should come Either I should finish up there or go back. Start from here and finish up here. And same basis, you've got to move your opponent from the tee. Get him deep into the sidewall. So you've got to try it there. That's good. Into the sidewall. Got to go deep into the sidewall. That's better. Thank you, Zarek. Now I'd like to demonstrate the boast, which is a difficult shot for beginners to master, but there is no harm trying. The boast is one way of moving your opponent into the front corners of the court. Although it is a very effective attacking shot, it has to be used defensively sometimes to get out of trouble when you're caught deep in the back corners and cannot play any other shot. In the situation of this practice, where the ball is being driven cross-court into the back corners, you must be prepared to face the back corner for the ball that actually is going straight into the back corners, or if it's angled into the side wall and going across the back wall, be prepared to pay face the back wall. In that situation, it's just like a cross-court shot, except you have to bring your position around several degrees, hitting that ball well in front of you and bringing it up onto the side wall so it carries onto the front. Notice that John is very well positioned in back of the court and taking the ball nice and early, playing the ball into the sidewall and moving his opponent to the front of the court. Must remember, don't keep close to the both walls. Keep away from the both walls so then you get a freedom of the stroke and the swing.
This is a good position. I've achieved a good balance early. I'm about to strike the ball well in front of my leading foot. My left hand has given me clearance and the eyes on the ball. John and I are practicing backhand balls. Notice how John is facing the back corner and moving his opponent from the tee into the front of the court. And he's keeping his distance away from the side wall as he was doing on the forehand side. It's very important to bend your knee with the height of the ball. The more the ball angles into this side wall and therefore is coming across the back wall, the more you've got to turn to face that back wall. And when you come through to hit the ball, get into a position so you can hit it well in front of that leading knee. The mistake too many people make is the ball's angling across here, they retreat with it into the back wall and get caught. Make sure as soon as that ball's angling there, you decided to take it off the back wall, turn, keep away from both walls, give yourself plenty of room and move into your shot so you can take it well in front of that leading knee. And remember, with a low bouncing ball, you get really low. And the way you can practice this is simply by throwing a ball onto that back wall. Then you don't get afraid of the position. I'll just demonstrate it. Little lob onto the back wall, through there, and that's the sort of position you should be going. And again, if the ball is very, very low, you've got to bend your knees and get the racket right under. And you can do a little lob onto the back wall, side wall, I'll just demonstrate it. And by bending my knees, coming right under the ball, the ball travels up onto that wall and onto the front wall without any difficulty. The important thing is to bend your knees and get the racket coming under the ball, hitting it in front of your leading knee. Right, Dini? Notice how John is very well balanced for the backhand boast, facing the back corner and bending his knee and getting right down to the ball. Move his opponent to the front court. Right, here's Hiddy and his younger brother, Zarek. Hiddy's giving Zarek a bit of practice on this forehand boast, and already Zarek's getting a little bit close to that ball in the corners. And as a result, he's not actually bringing his racket through parallel to the ground towards impact point. He's tending to drop the racket head. Hiddy, how's Eric um, coming along as a player? He's still got to improve on his forehand because he's tend to get too close to the wall or not bending his knee. Seems to be moving there quite friskly and going back to the tee nicely. And here he is again. He's had to hit the ball with an underarm action. It's gone up this time, but it's a very risky sort of action. Okay, now you're doing it on the uh, on the backhand side. Let's see how he gets on. Yes, he seems to be hitting it much better on this side. The racket is traveling parallel to the ground, close towards impact. That's right, on this shot actually, John, he's, uh, he's concentrating, bending his knee and facing the side wall. He's getting in a very good position for it. He's been hitting some good shots there. Yes, he seems to move well into position on this side. See how he's moving there, and he skips into position with both feet. It's good footwork. Well, let's remind ourselves about the cross court. Some of the important points. Facing the side wall. Playing the ball in front of leading knee. Open shoulders on follow through. Hit the ball wider and deeper to move your opponent away from the tee. And on the boast, remember that you've got to turn to play the ball. Be prepared to face the back wall when the ball comes to you very wide. Bend your knees, get the racket back early, and hit the ball in front of the leading foot. 
and get underneath the low balls. In squash, you don't feel like playing a game. It's the best thing to do, to go on the court and do some practice with your partner. And here John and I are practicing post and a cross court drive. It's a very good way to practice your shots and get you in the habit playing the sh shot with the correct foot. What do you think about that, John? I think you're right, Hiddy. I mean, so many people go on and have their regular game week after week and they're not improving at all and I think five minutes of this at the end of any game session can improve a lot I think this exercise actually is probably one of the most beneficial you can do in pairs from from beginner level right up to the professional level gets you used to the pace of the side walls and the front wall and of course teaches you width I'm trying to get the ball really wide but, um, if you were, in fact, going back to the tee, which neither of us are doing very well at the moment, but we're really concentrating on the, the technique side, um, we would be trying to dr drive our opponent away from the tee into the back court, and that means actually hitting the ball wide. So when I'm driving across court, it should be landing probably just behind the service box, directly into the wall. So then it then drops onto the floor and then onto the back wall. Yes, my aim is uh, on the boast to move the ball into the foreign corner, especially into the side wall of the backhand side of the court. That's what my aim is, to hit that neck and force you to give me a weaker return. Here we are swapping over here. And as you keep your racket up better on this side, Hiddy, you do have a tendency to drop your racket on the on the forehand side and it doesn't seem to have any bad effect on your game but in fact I do teach my pupils to try and keep their racket up in between shots so then it's easier to take it back either to the forehand or the backhand side holding it probably opposite their midriff with the racket head as high as their wrist well it's uh, John it's important to play the game on the correct way when you're learning once you have mastered the strokes then you can play with the racket he head down or up. But first of all, you've got to learn with the correct way. I mean, I have played for years and learned it in the correct way, but after playing for such a long time, now I've got so much of the control with the ball, so I can play the way I want to play it. So the first advice will be for the beginners to learn it to play the correct way of squash. That's good. Well, I hope they'll uh, take note of that. Here, I'm trying to get that ball into the forehand neck. But your cross court it's coming reasonably deep for me and it makes me move to right to the center of the court. And that is reasonable, good cross court actually, John. It's, uh, you're not allowing me to take the ball early. I had to let it go into the back of the court and then play it. Yes, I think a point uh, people will watch here is that I'm hitting that ball pretty high above the tin. So many people, when they hit a cross court, when they get it to the back, they try and hit it as hard as they can one inch above the tin. But here I'm hitting it probably just three or four foot above the tin, but it's getting that depth that's driving you right to the bay. Hi, John. Right, Hiddy. That's oh. easy for you, standing at the back. Do you think so? I'm going to make you work a little bit harder now. I'm going to put in the straight drop, and I want you to return it with the drop and then I will hit it cross-court again. So it's just an extension of the same exercise, practicing cross-court from the front of the court and you're boasting from the back. But now you're boasting under more realistic conditions because you're having to come from the front of the court. This is a 
good exercise once you've learned to control the ball. Top professionals use it a lot for building up stamina. And really it follows a logical sequence of shots. Because once you've boasted, chances are you've got to think that your opponent's probably going to play a straight drop on you, making you work the maximum distance from one corner to the other. And if you're stretched to the front, you may only be able to return with another straight drop. And so your opponent then cruelly pushes you back to the far corner with a cross-court drive again. He's covering the court very well here. Skipping is one of the important thing. I have been doing it for years because it builds my stamina and footstep. And I always do it after the hard game of squash about two hours and then I go on the court and count the skipping normally I do it 1500 2000 it's one of the exercise I will advise a lot of youngsters is improve their game <laughs> 